Let's talk about animation, shall we? Animation, the technique of photographing successive drawings or positions of puppets or models to create an illusion of movement when the movie is shown as a sequence. I may be biased, but to me, there's honestly nothing quite like it. It's so incredibly satisfying to see the smooth motion as a result of someone's hard work. And I do mean hard work. Trust me when I say animation is no simple task. It takes a ton of time just to make one little dinky clip. And as you can imagine, it's kind of expensive to make. For a long time, the only way animation was able to make a profit was by showing little shorts right before movies in the theater. Nowadays, theatrical shorts are kept around just for tradition's sake, but back in the old days, they were essential. But as time went on, animation was able to attract more of an audience, was able to make more money, and it was able to progress in higher and higher quality, so long as you had a lot of time to make your animation. But then, once upon a time, a little wooden box called the television really threw a kink in the system. If you want to be on television, you need to be able to make a lot of content really quickly. So for a while, the only animations that would run on TV were old theatrical shorts once they weren't showing in theaters anymore. But people wanted TV to be special. They wanted exclusive cartoons that no one has seen before anywhere else, and the animation industry really had to cut corners. There are 12 principles of animation. Basically, they're guidelines, and if you follow them all, then your animation is going to look good. But in order to get on television, they had to just straight up ignore about half of them just to make sure they're making episodes fast enough. And as a result, they made some of the funniest things you will ever see. If you have a weekend and you don't know what to do with it, get some friends together and just watch a bunch of old cartoons together. You are going to have a great time seeing how poorly these things have aged. Now that's not to say there aren't other things from back in the day that aged poorly, but it's not quite the same as how old cartoon shows have aged. There's just something about how television reflects most of the modern trends at the time, mixed with the poor budgets they had to make these shows. Jinkies, it's Haldane's ghost! And watching them is a video I've been dying to make for a long time. Is it fair that I'm making fun of the products of an industry that were really doing the best they could for the time? Probably not. Do I care though? No. Besides, if anything, we should be able to laugh at the poor quality of our older works, rather than being so repulsed by them that you cringe at the very thought of their existence. Ugh. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Battlefoot in another exciting adventure, the case of Ripcord Van Winkle. Our scene opens on an old deserted hangar near the little midwestern town of Weedsville. <laughs> Man, I love old cartoons so much. Who was that? Is that the ghost of Weedsville Airport? No, I'm pretty sure that's just the old guy closing the door. What's this? An announcement. What? So you thought that piece of paper was a ghost? You really have me lost right now. Why, this is the same kind of air oh. announcement they used to have. Oh, this suddenly got a lot less funny. Oh, jeez, this is really creepy now! I'm not sure if I should laugh or scream! But this is what I mean by having to cut corners just to be able to get on television. They just superimposed real-life mouths on distilled drawings because they couldn't afford to lip-sync. Which is crazy! Lip-syncing is one of the easiest things to learn how to animate, and yet back then that was just too expensive. With restrictions like this, the genres of cartoons back then were probably pretty simplistic so they wouldn't have to animate too much, right? Nope! They tried anything! I mean, props to them for being ambitious, but what do you get when you have the budget of a corn muffin and you try to take on a genre that requires a lot of action? I'll tell you what you get. You get Magneto defeated by a wooden gun. I defeated you once, and I shall do it again! No, Magneto. I let you win before. Dude, something is very wrong with your back right now. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things that makes superheroes so cool is the intense fighting in action, right? So do you think they do it here? Of course not. They can't even get proper body proportion right. But now the victory belongs to the Fantastic Four. Fool! Have you forgotten my invincible magnetic power? With but a gesture, I can destroy it or turn it against you. Not this time, Magneto. This time I'm fighting for real. It's... Impossible! It cannot be! Nothing can defy my magnetic power! The Fantastic Four can! Y you know, kids were excited to watch this at one point. 
Like, this is what you would wake up Saturday morning to watch back in 1967. Oh boy, I can't wait to see Mr. Fantastic and Magneto duke it out by talking to each other. My power is gone. I, I'm helpless. Magnetism! It's over, Magneto. You're having a chance. I surrender. I give up. Wow. Now wasn't that intense? Didn't that keep you on the edge of your seat? Here come the police. You won't be lonely much longer. First tell me, how did you do it? How did you take away my power? I didn't, Magneto. My gun isn't real. I made it out of wood, specially to fool you. What? A wooden gun? A wooden gun? A wooden gun? A wooden gun? No. Take him away, man. A wooden gun. He tricked me with a wooden gun. Yeah, Magneto, he sure fooled you, for you can only control metal. Now get into the metal police car and sit quietly strapped in your metal handcuffs. I mean, isn't this just a metaphor for life? Magneto was defeated because he thought he lost everything, when in reality it was just a small problem he didn't quite understand. Maybe, in our own way, we all have our own wooden guns in life. Old superhero shows like this are always a goldmine for wonderfully awful moments. One of my favorites being the Hanna-Barbera Spider-Man cartoon. I am the Rhino. Nothing can withstand me. <sighs> oh, Hanna-Barbera. This is where you're going to find the juicy stuff, if the amount of Scooby-Doo clips floating around YouTube is anything to go by. Zoinks! It's the gay blade! You have a problem with that, Shaggy? Gay blades, gay blades, let it rip. <laughs> Honestly, half the time you don't even know if what's funny about the scene was intentional or not. Now what's this? Best of worst Velma? Are you- Oh my god. Are you- are you drooling? No! Good. Jinkies! I'm sure glad we could get tickets for tonight's Batty Awards. Oh, Velma, you don't sound like yourself at all. Velma sounds like she should be teaching kindergarten. <laughs> she totally does. Though honestly, I think my favorite Velma is the sassy Velma. Mom, you are not welcome in the castle. Go now, or abandon all hope of seeing the sun again. You stop that. <laughs> 1979 to 1984. Man, I love the 80s. That's like my favorite decade ever. It's just a plethora of bad ideas. Because the 80s is a decade that people decided that drugs were cool. Seriously, with all the bright colors they love to put on screen, along with the insane concepts that spawned from these cartoons this decade, you cannot convince me that these cartoons were not made for people to pop LSD in before they started watching. <laughs> This is a story about an ordinary teddy bear. When he was made, they found something wrong with him and threw him away like a piece of rubbish into an old dark storeroom. Then, from outer space, a spotty man brought him to life with his cosmic dust. He took him to a magic cloud where Mother Nature gave him special powers. That bear became Super Ted. Like, what is this? This is literally what you would come up with if you want to make fun of someone for being high. A spotty man brought him to life with magic dust and took him to a cloud where Mother Nature gave him special powers. <sighs> What the frick is that thing? Also, this has to be the decade where a lot of people discovered that they were gay. And while we're on the topic of 80s cartoons, the Smurfs cartoon came out during this time and... Oh boy, the Hanna-Barbera Smurf cartoon. I really wanted to talk about this more in my last video, but it was getting too long and I really needed to wrap things up. But now... Here we go. What is this show? In fact, revisiting it for the last video is what inspired me to make this video. It's what brought to my attention all the quality errors old cartoons used to make in their shows. 
recycling animation clips, constantly cutting off audio in the middle of characters talking. But when they try that spell, they're in for a big surprise. Characters talking in the wrong voice. I don't know, it came rolling down a hill. And people just doing things not normally. What is he doing? Why is he doing this? It's so weird. And having the comics to directly compare to definitely did not help this show's case. In the comic of the Astro Smurf, the Smurf who builds the rocket got the idea of a propeller powered ship because he saw a helicopter leaf fall and since, well, they spin, when they fall it looks like a propeller. You wanna know how he gets the idea to build a rocket in the cartoon? Hanna-Barbera makes such weird changes. Why did Smurfette sound like an old lady? Why did Hanna-Barbera rip off Scooby-Doo so many times? Why did they make a show of the Fawns traveling through time? Why did they make shows of the Josie and the Pussycats, Casper and Yogi Bear in outer space? Why did they make so many Tom and Jerry movies and just put them in a bunch of random franchises? Why is Hanna-Barbera so weird? Seriously, you could spend days making fun of Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Except for Wally Gator. I will not allow you to make fun of Wally Gator. He is a precious bean. I keep using old cartoons as a general term, but what exactly do I mean by that? Well, basically any cartoon that aired from the 1980s and earlier. From what I can tell, television cartoons started to improve once DuckTales aired in 1987. This is the oldest cartoon that I can think of where you like to watch it because of the story, characters, and animation were genuinely enjoyable and you don't enjoy it because someone slaps their chest to clap. This was a gradual process after all. It's not like DuckTales aired and cartoons instantly started being good. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. Captain Planet. The man, Lady the Chargers, number one fan. Check him out, you're gonna see. He's the Mega Mac Daddy of Ecology. <laughs> what is this? I think I just found the best, worst intro ever made. Hold on, I need to see that part again. Check him out, you're gonna see. He's the Mega Mac Daddy of Ecology. <laughs> What's a Mega Mac Daddy? Is Bowser a Mega Mac Daddy? I mean, he's pretty Mega Mac and Daddy, if I do say so myself. Man, Captain Planet, what even was this show? You and Link have too many kids. It must stop. Oh no, Captain Planet, it's China. Polluting our skies and waters, contributing to the overpopulation crisis, and spawning the plagues of the world. They must be stopped. <laughs> okay, you know, an episode like that would probably go better than their actual episode on AIDS did. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna start making a playlist on my channel filled with old cartoon clips I think are pretty funny. Send me some if you find some so I can add them to the list. Just make sure they aren't marked for kids because you can't save kids content in a playlist. Gee, thanks, Kappa. You sure are protecting those kids from those evil playlists or whatever. Let's look for a couple to start our list off. He's going over that cliff. This one looks interesting. <laughs> He's going over that cliff! <laughs> Lovely. Let's add it. Oh, yeah, this was definitely going on. This is one of my absolute favorite. My precious power! God forever! Oh, maybe I should just retitle this video to losing my mind over cartoon clips. I don't know. Well, for your guys' sake, I hope it was worth your time. Heck, if you like this enough, maybe I can even do a sequel. Maybe next time I can react to old anime. The bees, the bees are here. Ah. Oh.